Polish cinema for beginners. Today's subject is all the hate. And uh, we have all the time the guest with us. Uh, today is Martina Stets. Hi. Hello. She's an educa- uh, educator, trainer, and the area of improving social and emotional competence, and leads and train workshops of violence prevention and cyberbullying. I think it's a great uh, subject to the film we choose, you choose for the opening. It's The Hater. In our first meeting, we will be focusing on the hate, on the cyberbullying and bullying in general, and the uh, film that we've chosen as a main subject is The Hater by Jan Komasa and we have Martina with us to kind of uh, get deeper into this kind of subject in a Polish context. Um, I think our frame will be two films by Jan Komasa because uh, The Hater is kind of a spin-off uh, for uh, other film that premiered almost a decade ago. It was Suicide Room. The subjects are... Uh, similar but not the same could you kind of for for the beginning of our conversation differentiate what was the suicide room for you about and what was the hater about Mm -hmm. okay so the suicide room was definitely about uh, cyber bullying and uh, cyber bullying is a is a form of bullying so uh, and harassment uh, which uh, which is amongst peers uh, mainly. It happens amongst children or adolescents uh, and it is uh, done by um, internet tools, media tools. And uh, it is uh, very important to differentiate it from uh, hate speech uh, because um, it uh, always happens uh, only when there is an intent of uh, harming someone, uh, either when uh, there is an imbalance of power. So those who harm bullies are uh, feeling uh, stronger. And on the internet, it might be uh, not, of course, a physical power, but uh, maybe stronger um, or better uh, internet competencies. It is very important that the victim uh, is unable to to fight back, is feeling uh, very harm, uh, yeah, very hurt. Um, this film is about uh, cyberbullying. And uh, the other film you've just said, uh, The Hater, uh, is uh, about hate speech. Hate speech is just a form of cyberbullying. Uh, so it might be used uh, why cyberbullying someone but uh, they don't have to uh, use this this particular form. Very often hate speech, what is, what is interesting, is uh, aimed at a uh, person or, or people from the groups uh, whose uh, traits are um, different, differentiate them from the others in the society, such as um, a sexual orientation or race or a uh, skin color or uh, religion views uh, or even political views uh, while uh, when we talk about cyberbullying uh, the, the cause of uh, treating someone badly might be any really uh, so it's very different the hater have this um, what Komasa uh, shows it's uh, today div- diversity of Poland we have so much uh, so much difference between the class and between people, even in families, which uh, it's shown in the film. And you work in school and I've, uh, with your all workshops. And is it you see the diver- diversity in the in the like uh, youth? Well, yeah, of course, you can see the uh, social differences, um, even on the economical uh, level. But also there are so many differences when you uh, and you can see them like right away after a few minutes uh, of discussion with uh, children and adolescents when you go to, uh, to very small towns even near Wrocław and then you go back to Wrocław and you have uh, same workshops with uh, with children. We see the Komasa movie, the first one is mm-hmm. about the high school, but we also look so, we see so many Americans movies mm-hmm. and series, series for young adult now are really 
uh, focus on bullying because they try to mm-hmm. help and overcome the problem in American schools. Yeah. But it's so different in Poland than in America. What we see in the in the screen, there is a lots of race difference mm-hmm. and lots of economical difference because they need to pay for uh, education, uh, the the university. So there is a tension in the high school. But in Poland, we don't have so many races or economical tension as in state. But we still have a case of bullying. Yes, we do. <laughs> Since, uh, as I said, uh, anybody can be a victim of bullying and cyberbullying. Very often those are the children who are uh, less popular than others. But uh, any reason can be uh, that thing that makes the others uh, bully you. Uh, and still, yes, we have uh, those problems that happens in other countries. So that n- nowadays there are so many uh, children uh, from other countries uh, countries that come to uh, to Poland, such as uh, Ukraine, for example. And even though you don't see those uh, differences uh, when you look at them, you, c- you can get to know about it uh, just after uh, you, heard, you hear the accent or there are some even small cultural differences, which might be very uh, enriching and very uh, interesting. But uh, for those who are not taught uh, that it is uh, good uh, when we have a very multicultural society, um, maybe they might feel threatened by those who are different in any any ways. Maybe it's, it's very often it's just enough to uh, to have uh, different uh, religion beliefs. And I'm not talking about uh, such dif- differences uh, like being Muslim or Christian. But, you know, being Jew <laughs> in Poland is still uh, these days uh, a reason why to be uh, bullied or uh, discriminated. I would like to, because I think we will wrap up this Uh, this part of our discussion is still focusing on the suicide room and uh, mm-hmm. on the school relations. I would like to ask you how realistic the portrayal in uh, the suicide room by Jan Komasa, but also in the word by Anna Kazajak. Mm-hmm. And it's also, also uh, set in high school, in mm-hmm. high school uh, mm, scenario. So how realistic are, are those po- portrayals of uh, Polish youth, Polish schools and bo- bullying in Polish circumstances. First of all, a film of a uh, uh Kazajak doesn't show, uh, in my opinion, uh, bullying or cyberbullying uh, in a, this classical way of thinking. There is a lot of ma- manipulation uh, ongoing uh, by uh, Skype, for example, but uh, there is uh, no such relation as a bully victim and uh, those who watch, like bystanders. I would say uh, that the suicide room is much more realistic and we can um, get attached easily to uh, to the the hero of the movie, Dominique, uh, Dominique, yeah. yeah. Uh, And thanks uh, to Komasa who showed, uh, who decided to show all those uh, range of feelings and uh, so many um, difficult, you know, ways of reaction to to many situations this this boy uh, shows. We feel, I I felt very attached to uh, to this, uh, to this boy. And, uh, And not only me, but all the adolescents uh, who, who really felt that f- movie and were interested in it and uh, this this film had a great success in Poland it, it shows that uh, it was very well made and uh, that uh, teenagers find themselves in um, in maybe s- some of the roles that that are showed in this uh, m- movie yeah We've spent a few minutes talking about the suicide room, but the main subject it was The Hater by the same director by Jan Komasa, almost a decade between those two films. And I wanted to ask you, is it telling that 10 years ago Jan Komasa decided to portray uh, bullying? Today he decided to portray hate. Is it 
evolution of the violence strategies in our society or is it just that the movies portray two different generations and uh, the bullies from high school when they graduate they became become haters i don't think that it has to be like that that those who bully they uh, they become haters and uh, as uh, the uh, results of the researchers shows it's not really like that those are very often different uh, traits of personality uh, which is uh, it, would, it might sound scary but those who are haters uh, on the internet they uh, very often have uh, personal traits such as uh, sadism machiavellism and they're very close to uh, psychopaths so it's very <laughs> so those are the traits that not all all those who bully they they have those traits not at all because uh bullying is very contagious and uh, many adolescents uh, uh do it in a very non reflective way and decide to uh, to harass the others just because the others do it and they see it as a joke no it doesn't have to be an evolution <laughs> which is a which is a good uh, thing uh it's i would say that it's rather uh, very visible now on the internet and anytime we use uh, internet tools uh any social media mainly we can we can see um hate uh, messages or uh, hateful opinions and uh that's the reason why maybe he decided to to talk about it since uh this topic in general is very um is very uh, current uh in in our media and uh, you can see it everywhere also uh the other thing he talks about is uh those social inequalities and um how uh how different our uh, point of views are on life in poland nowadays uh and there is only white and black and white uh, views that's the only thing we can see and uh i think that's why he port portrayed uh this this topic because we are very divided these days but also i have this feeling that mm -hmm. it's like he's saying that today it's a general permit for hate everywhere mm -hmm. yeah, that's it's like I mean. a kind of a statement that we just we just used the hate more than 10 years ago. The first film was more like the children have lots of uh, violence inside the closed schools, but now it's like a language of everyone around. That's what I meant by mm -hmm. evolution. I think that uh, has, has it been like that, that we, uh, we have been looking at the rise of hate in recent, in recent years in Poland or in, in Europe or in the world? Yeah, in rather general. in general. Yeah, it is like that. And uh, as you said, that that permit, that the fact that nobody says, uh, no, you can't do this, and the consequences of using hate speech um, makes people feel uh, that they can do it, they can use it freely, and uh, there are no uh, real consequences to that. So, of course, yes, uh, and there are many mechanisms and uh, automatism uh, uh, on the internet that makes us feel that we can do such uh, things it's very interesting that uh, young uh, youngsters in general they are um, using hate speech and uh, they uh, they uh, cyber bully the others uh, very much more often uh, than uh, than adults and it's uh, it's uh, usually because uh, they cannot control self-control uh, themselves and it's because of our uh, the construction of their brain the prefrontal uh, cortex um, is not fully developed and uh, it is responsible for decision making and uh, rethinking before you do something and because it is not fully developed at the young age before you're 20 uh, they cannot stop themselves and that's why very often they say stuff they wouldn't they would never say face to face or or they do some very horrible harmful things to each other on the internet because it's easier and there is nothing to to stop them they feel a bit anonymous yeah too. Invi invisible invisible yeah exactly and there is no uh real consequences that's of course they are in, in real life but that's not what they feel how is it when they grow up they they <laughs> because it's it's a, like it's also a change in uh, generation we didn't have so much internet and so mm -hmm. much uh, freedom in uh, in any case of it 
even in hate. Mm-hmm. So how is it resonate when you grow up with uh, with all those baggage of being so harmful in your youth, but nobody really know that it was you? In fact, uh we were doing very similar <laughs> things. We were just not using the internet. Okay. That's the only difference. We didn't have that great tool that uh, that can give us so many great, great opportunities, <laughs> but also very dangerous opportunities. But uh, that's the only difference that has happened during uh, two last decades. Uh, they're just using that tool that uh, they can yeah thanks to which they can do so much more harm and this is scary and dangerous yeah but after after some point in our life we can we can uh decide uh in a reflective way how to in what situation engage and how to engage in it i always hesitate when when we are talking about generational changes because of uh, outside circumstances because uh, yeah uh, the internet is here now but i think the kids will be kids boys will be boys girls will be girls and uh, and bullying was there in our generation and in previous generations as well mm-hmm. but uh, i think that um, uh, maybe you could uh, you could extrapolate on that that there there is probably a scale that you couldn't reach before with internet that uh, the comments uh, the the video uh, embarrassing video of you can go viral as in uh, mm-hmm. let's say uh, let's say in the suicide room and we are back at that subject and uh, there will be consequences that couldn't be really reached mm-hmm. before before the internet What I'm trying to ask, what is the real influence of the of the network of internet on the bullying and on the effects of bullying and hate? Oh, well, uh, first of all, um, it, it has a very, very big influence because uh, while using the, the internet, there is a, an effect called the uh, online dis- dis- disinhibition effect. Uh, which uh, which works in a very easy way. Uh, while using any internet tools, we feel like uh, we can say much more and we can do much more than we would do in uh, real life. Because you're asking, what's the influence? It can be very good or very bad. So you can see it on the internet, uh, in the chat rooms, for example, or in some groups that uh, people, they give uh, to each other a lot of support and they're very kind as kind as they would maybe never be uh, face to face. But it can be also like that, that due to using internet, you per, uh, you give yourself a permission to be more uh, hateful towards it and you can easily judge the other. It's a tool that can be used uh, in both ways, very good and, uh, and bad, very bad. I want to ask you about your work. You're probably showing something to, to the youth, uh, mm-hmm. some films and maybe scenes from the movies. And Hater had this uh, a lot of common with Todd Phillips' mm-hmm. Joker. Uh, Hater, Tomek, it's not really the great hero. It's more like a, a villain of the story, but also can you young people use him as a good example and when you choose your movies do you have this fear that some movies we think they have a great way to show problematic cases Mm -hmm. but also they can be used in the different way by the youth as a bad example Mm -hmm. but the cool example Mm -hmm. yeah i think uh that a film that is uh very good for adolescents like high school students is uh, love simon It's uh, one of those uh, films that uh, uh, teenagers really love and they feel uh, attached to heroes in this film, like all the the main characters, really. And uh, I very often show this film to high school students and they applaud at the end. They very often cry because it's so moving for them. And it's a cyberbullying story, but they... but. Uh, It's very close. It's like a pop cult- pop culture movie, uh, and it's an American movie. But uh, they really like like it, and uh, there are also some uh, consequ- consequences showed in this movie. Um, but it's very good. Um, and the other uh, film I showed, but that is only to teachers and uh, educators and parents, is. Um, It's a Danish movie, really. It is called um, Hug Me. 
Um, it was distributed here in, in Poland uh, in 2010. Um, and it's a film uh, that it's very moving. It is, uh, it is very difficult to watch. It was showed uh, in a New Horizons uh, education uh, many years ago, but it's very difficult for children to watch and it's very, um, I, I think it's a good uh, movie to use rather uh, for, in education uh, for, for, for teachers. So, because it's very uh, dramatic, and also it's uh, based on facts, because it's the real story from Gdańsk. Uh, it's about Anya, so the topic is very difficult, I'd say. I think we will be wrapping up here. That was the mm -hmm. discussion about all that hate in Polish cinema today. The discussion in Radio Wrocław Kultura Studio. Our guest was Martina Stets. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us Thank you. today. <laughs> And uh, next time we will see each other is 10th of July and we will be talking on the subject of what do Poles do in the shadows uh, and the main title that will be inspiration for that discussion will be United States of Love by Tomasz Wasilewski. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for tuning in to Polish Cinema for Beginners Season 14 on the air of Radio Wrocław Kultura. Mm -hmm.